Hello, in today's video, I'm going to talk about one ingredient to pay attention to, and that's soy lecithin. You may have heard of soy lecithin many times, even recognize it in a lot of your favorite processed food products. That's because it's in a lot of conventional foods, but for the sake of understanding, I will define this common ingredient. Soy lecithin is derived from raw soybeans. These soybeans can be genetically modified or organic. Since soybeans are a highly genetically modified crop in the United States, it's safe to assume that soy lecithin is a GMO ingredient unless specifically stated that it's organic or part of a certified organic food product which uses no chemicals. Lecithin, in general, can be derived from many plant and animal sources such as soybeans, sunflower kernels, eggs, wrapped seeds, and milk. It is naturally occurring fatty acid compounds, phospholipids, and oils found within plant and animal tissues and is obtained using chemical solvents such as hexane and water, which are mixed together. Then the solvents are removed and the lecithin is dried to produce the ingredient that is added to food and supplements. Soy lecithin is often in a liquid form, but it can also come in granules. Its competition contains choline, fatty acids, glycerol, glycolipids, phospholipids, phosphoric acid, and triglycerides. Soy lecithin has many beneficial uses for manufacturers, but it is widely used as an emulsifier, allowing water and oil ingredients to easily combine and stay that way. It accomplishes this by breaking down oil, which also makes the food more digestible. It's also a stabilizer and antioxidant, prolonging the shelf life of food while maintaining their appearance. Other uses are for flavor enhancement, serving as an anti foaming and anti caking agent, controlling sugar crystallization, inhibiting flowers from clumping when added to liquids, and reducing egg and fat requirements in baked goods thus saving companies money. As mentioned, soy lecithin is in a ton of food products and even non-food products. It's a very common ingredient that I'm sure you've noticed it on many ingredient lists, but some popular items that contain soy lecithin are breads, cereals, chocolate, pre-workout shakes, health supplements, ice cream, energy bars, cooking sprays, salad dressings, and infant formulas. It's even found in non-food items such as soaps. When it comes to food, soy lecithin is generally in a small amount. This is one reason why some doctors and food manufacturers don't list soy lecithin as a food allergy ingredient, though those with soy allergies and sensitivities should avoid it. Though approved as a safe ingredient by the FDA and in Europe for consumption, there's a lot of controversy surrounding soy lecithin due to previous studies and reports, but the results are not fully understood or conclusive, so more research is needed to confirm its long-term effects on health. So with this, it's important to evaluate both sides of the controversy surrounding soy lecithin. On the positive side, many have claimed that soy lecithin can improve brain function, lower cholesterol, prevent the formation of gallstones, increase stress resilience, and boost immunity. Even treat heart disease and cancer, though this is largely unfounded and more conclusive research is needed to confirm this. These benefits are the results of the nutrient content found in soy lecithin. Soy lecithin is high in vitamin K, vitamin E, polyunsaturated fats, and choline, which supports muscle and cognitive functioning, DNA synthesis, lipid metabolism, and cell membrane signaling. It's important to note that obtaining quality soy lecithin, such as organic, and even considering supplements, though not required for a healthy diet, will provide an optimal level of these nutrients. On the negative side, there are three concerns. First, is soy lecithin being a genetically modified product? Though there is organic soy lecithin without chemical solvents, unless it is labeled organic soy lecithin, it's very likely that it's from a GMO crop and produced with chemicals. Currently about 95% of soy crops in the U.S. is GMO, making its end product that as well. Chemical solvents like hexane, which is also used in paint, rubber, cars, and textiles, has been known to produce negative health effects when inhaled, such as dizziness, headaches, eye and throat irritations, blurry vision, and nausea. However, the amount of hexane left in soy lecithin is small, around 1,000 parts per million. But even with this information, residual hexane is not regulated by the FDA, so no one can be sure how much is in a servant of a product that contains it. Also, studies have found that soy lecithin can cause gastrointestinal and inflammation conditions as well as glucose intolerance. A 2019 study found that food emulsifiers like soy lecithin can alter gut flora disturb the intestinal barrier and make it easy for gut bacteria to enter the bloodstream. This can lead to poor nutrient absorption and digestion function. Second, our allergy concerns. 
Though soy lecithin contains trace amounts of soy protein, those who are allergic to soy or who have soy sensitivities can experience adverse reactions. However, many researchers believe that soy lecithin won't cause allergic reactions in most who have soy allergies. But even with that claim, if you have severe soy allergies or even just concerns, it's best to avoid foods that contain soy lecithin. Third is hormone disruption. Soy has isoflavones, also known as phytoestrogens, which naturally occur in soy. They are present in other consumable plant products, however, they are high in soy. Isoflavones have a similar chemical structure to estrogen, so it's easy for them to bind with estrogen receptors, which in turn cause estrogen effects in the body. Though there have been studies on this, more research needs to be done to get a full understanding of how isoflavones affect long-term health. But despite this, there are health concerns related to isoflavones' effects on the thyroid, uterus, and breast. Some suggest opting for fermented soy products like miso and tempeh since the fermentation process breaks down anti-nutrients and provides valuable probiotics. And there are also concerns about isoflavones on testosterone. Animal studies have found that consuming large amounts of soy phytoestrogens can reduce testosterone levels, although this has not been proven in men. So, should you consume soy lecithin? This is one ingredient I can't give a solid yes or no answer, only it depends. The controversy and lack of concrete studies leaves this ingredient as one holding a lot of mystery. I will say that if you choose to consume soy lecithin, only consume that which is organic with no artificial or chemical solvents used to reduce it. Also choose non-GMO soy lecithin. And if you have any soy sensitivities, avoid this ingredient altogether. As far as the health concerns, I always go with my instincts. Despite what researchers or experts may say or approve, if I'm not comfortable consuming a product, I choose not to. So if any of the negative health effects mentioned concern you, avoid soy lecithin. Though it's in a lot of conventional processed foods, there are a good number of organic and natural food products that don't contain the ingredient, including chocolate, cookies, and crackers. Ultimately, focusing on a whole food diet that consists of unaltered foods found directly in nature will ensure you get the highest and most potent amount of nutrients, even choline, and avoid chemicals from entering your diet. Also, choosing to make your foods from scratch whenever possible will allow you to avoid questionable ingredients such as soy lecithin. Though with conventional GMO soy lecithin, most of its processing chemicals are removed at the end stages of production, consumer products that contain them over a long period of time can lead to negative health effects. When it comes to chemicals in our processed foods, it's not always about the immediate effects, but the long-term effects after a lot of what was potentially a small amount per servant has accumulated into something significant and concerning. So just because something isn't harmful in small amounts doesn't mean it can't become a significant and harmful amount with long-term consumption. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a better understanding of what soy lecithin is and the controversy surrounding it. If you found this video valuable, please like, comment, and share so others can learn about this questionable ingredient as well. Subscribe for more Whole Foods and Nutrition videos, and until next time, take care.